in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Tonight, Bible study from Psalm 38. Psalm 38. The title of this psalm in Hebrew, a psalm of David to bring to remembrance. This psalm is a psalm of repentance, so he is reminding himself uh, about the importance of repentance. He remembers that he sins all the time before his eyes, but also God is merciful and forgives his sins. In the Septuagint, the title is A Psalm of David for a remembrance concerning the Sabbath. But actually, there is no mention of the Sabbath in this psalm, neither a thanksgiving. It is deeply repentance psalm. But how can we understand that in the Septuagint it is mentioned for a remembrance concerning the Sabbath? Sabbath means rest. And as we will see in this psalm, David actually physically, spiritually, psychologically was in a big trouble because of his sin. And through repentance and through God's forgiveness, he actually received back his rest. So when we understand that Sabbath means rest, so when he said a Psalm of David for a remembrance concerning the Sabbath, how to find your rest? Your rest is in repentance, in returning back to God, in accepting God's forgiveness. This is a third of the repentance Psalms. As we know, there are seven repentance psalms. Psalm 6, 32, 38, 51, 102, 130, and 143. And some think that this psalm is written in figurative language to represent trouble heavily pressing upon David as if he was sick. So in this psalm, there are many references to physical illness. But this actually doesn't mean literally that David was physically ill. But this physical illness was written in a figurative language to say how he was very, very troubled in his soul and in his spirit. Others think that it is intended to refer not to David, but to the people of Israel in general as afflicted and persecuted. In general, many scholars say it refers to some severe afflictions which David had after he sinned with Bechabba. Whatever it was, he deeply, David deeply repents and asks forgiveness and earnestly beseeches support from God. This psalm is a song full of pain and sadness with guilt, as David felt the painful effects both physically, spiritually, psychologically of his sin. In this psalm, we can say that David was quite aware of two things, the evil of his own sin and God's displeasure or great displeasure when we sin. The psalm is 22 verses. We can classify the psalm into three sections from verse 1 to 8, description of his physical and mental sufferings. From 9 to 14, 
the forsaking of friends and the threats of the enemies. From 15 to 22, pleading for deliverance. So let's start from verse 1. Lord, do not rebuke me in your wrath, nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. Actually, verse 1 is exactly the, the same words of Psalm 6, verse 1. Psalm 6, verse 1. So these words are almost identical with Psalm 6, verse 1. So under a sense of God's deep displeasure, David cried out to God. Yes, David sensed both God's wrath and his displeasure, but he tried to draw near to God. The repentant David prays to God not to punish him in his anger and his wrath as a judge, but in his mercy as a loving father. Usually in the divine liturgy, when we mention that he has appointed a day for recompense on which he will appear to judge the world in righteousness and give each one according to his deeds, our response, according to your mercy, O Lord, and not according to our sins. So David actually does not reject God's rebuke, but asks for his mercy. So what he is asking, do not rebuke me in your wrath. Yes, rebuke me, but not in your wrath. Nor chasten me in your hot displeasure. I accept your chastening but do it to me with your great mercy. Because David can bear the anger of others, but he cannot bear God's displeasure. Verse 2, For your arrows pierce me deeply, and your hand presses me down. God's arrows, what God's arrows here? Are God's judgment in general, as we read in Psalm 7, 12 and Deuteronomy 32, verse 23. Arrows also refer to the pain and sickness, as mentioned in the book of Job chapter 6 and chapter 16 and in Lamentation chapter 3. So David is using poetic pictures to describe how deeply he sensed the displeasure of God as if arrows piercing him deeply. He was afflicted as if God has wounded him with arrows, arrows which deeply pierced his flesh. Also, by arrows, uh, maybe he refers to those fearful rebukes he got from Prophet Nathan when he rebuked him. And also he said, your hand presses me down. Maybe this some bodily disease inflicted on him. And by mentioning your hand presses me down, he started to describe some of his bodily troubles, physical illness. So in verse 3 he said, There is no soundness in my flesh because of your anger, nor any health in my bones because of my sin. So he declares that there is no soundness in his flesh, no health, no feeling of life or energy, no vital strength. Also in my bones, no health. His bones ache continually and give him no rest. And actually, inner trouble can have its effect on the body and makes the body deteriorate. 
It's called psychosomatic diseases. So when our soul is troubled, our spirit is in pain, this is reflected on our body. David recognized the hand of God in his misery, but he did not play the victim. He did not accuse God of injustice or unfairness. He knows the reason, he knows the cause. He knew it was because of his sins, his iniquities, and his foolishness. As he said, because, nor any health in my bones because of my sins, because of my sins. So David was miserable, but he did not have the victim mentality because he knew for sure that his sins were the cause of his crisis. That's why in verse 4 he said, For my iniquities have gone over my head. My iniquities have gone over my head. Like a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My iniquities have gone over my head. He admits that his sins are so numerous, so great, he is overwhelmed by them. They are heavy like heavy burden. They are too heavy. David felt oppressed under the weight of his sins. Yes, the sins one commits have an effect in soul, in body, and in spirit. It is foolish to forsake the way of right righteousness and allow sin to get dominion over us. That's why he said, my wounds are foul and festering because of my foolishness. So he admits that to stray away, to drift away from the way of righteousness, it is foolishness. That's why he hoped that an honest and heartfelt confession of his misery would move God's compassion. As we read in the Bible, if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive them. Verse 6, I am troubled. I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long, all the day long. So the pain of David's sin affected him in almost every way. He was bent, bowed down. He struggled and twisted in pain as a result of his iniquities. Bowed down also, we can understand it, he was brought low to be depressed with pain, grief, and sorrow. As if he is saying, on account of my sins, I was crushed and bound down. And also, I mourned my sin all the day. I experienced this sorrow. As if I am walking all the day with these signs of grief and heavy sorrow. Because of his shame, he did not dare to look up to heaven. He is bowed down. And thus, humble, he is forced to look upon the ground. And for all these reasons, he go mourning all the day long. It's like the tax collector in the parable of the Pharisee and tax collector. He actually did not dare to look up to heaven, but he bowed down and beat his chest and said, God have mercy upon me, O sinner. We can see the same uh, picture here. For my loins are full of inflammation, and there is no soundness 
in my flesh salvation yes his heart was disturbed trembling and filled with troubles he said my strength fails me it is rapidly failing he regarded himself as rapidly approaching death david felt so low that life and even the light of his eyes were leaving him verse 11 my loved ones and my friends stand aloof from my plague and my relatives stand afar off so having described the internal war that's constantly going on within him now he speaks about the external war the persecution and suffering that are consequent of sin first he complains of his friends and loved one rising up against him the psalmist felt that he is rebuked and chastened by god so he looked around him for comfort and sympathy from his friends but they hold aloof draw away and desert him his loved one his friends turned it into enemies stood aloof from him with no feeling of friendship nor love assuming that god is against him so they stood against him maybe he was referring to epsilon rebellion epsilon his son in which he was epsilon was joined by a great number of david's friends and relatives those such epsilon and his companions pressed in upon him upon david to put him to death his own servants and soldiers did not protect him and stood aloof from him so david's misery was unrelieved by either friends or relatives his loved ones either did not care or could not help him so david also endured worse than the lack of support from friends and relatives he faced determined enemies who constantly plotted again his destruction as we read in verse 12 those also who seek my life lay snares for me those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan deception all the day long so david complained from the malice of his enemies who used the chance of his illness his illness and troubles to seek his soul to destroy his life completely even using lies and slanders what david suffered from from his own people is a prophecy about what the lord jesus christ himself suffered for the lord jesus christ his own came against him for example his disciples escaped at the moment of his crucifixion peter james and john could not stay awake with him on the night of his crucifixion as the enemies laid the snare for david the same satan also lay snares for the souls of men and the jews did the same with the lord jesus christ and the wicked men do the same same with the saints then david in verse 13 he said but i like a deaf man do not hear i am like a mute who does not open his mouth david was so depressed and afflicted that he felt powerless to say a word to respond to these attacks 
His inability to defend himself meant that he needed God more than ever. For him, the only hope was God. And all these are true. If you remember the story of Shammai in 2 Samuel verse 16, when Shammai railed against David and called him bloodthirsty man, David actually bore it with the most incredible patience. He did not allow one of his followers to harm Shammai or to reprove him. And thus he was literally, it was literally true that he was like a deaf man, do not hear, like mute who does not open his mouth. David was like a man who is unable to answer, to warn or to rebuke an adversary. And the feeling in verse 13 is repeated in verse 14 to show the greatness of his patience and self-restraint. Verse 14, thus I am like a man who does not hear and in whose mouth is no response. And again, verse 13 and 14 are prophecy about the Lord Jesus Christ as we read in Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Verse 15, for in you, O Lord, I hope you will hear, O Lord, my God. He acted in patience because he trusted God and he put all his hope in God. He committed his whole problem to God. So David chose to allow his affliction to push him toward God instead of pulling him away from God because God was his only hope. And always, always God is our only hope. Unfortunately, some of us, when we get into trouble, we pull away from God. Although the right response is to turn back to God. David believed that God would take care of his reputation and he would defend and forgive him. David appealed to God not only because he was disheartened, but also because he did not want his adversaries to rejoice over him. As we read in verse 16, For I said, Hear me, lest they rejoice over me, lest when my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me. So in praying to God, not to let his enemies exult over his fall or to magnify themselves over him with hurtful words and mockery uh, when his foot slips. David felt that his strength was almost gone and he was in continual danger of falling into sin or sinking under his accumulated burdens. David, in all this affliction, he was ready to give up in, his, in despair. He was so de depressed in his spirit. As we read in verse 17, For I am ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. All of us often have this feeling that our sorrow are so great that we cannot hope to stand firm any longer. And if God did not intervene and step in, we will fall. But David never blamed God. The fact that he was sinner was always, always in front of his eyes. In verse 18 he said, For I will declare my iniquity, I will be in anguish 
over my sin. So, David knows that the source of all his trouble was his sin. Sin was what pressed him down, what crushed him to dust. So David raised his prayer and supplication to God, not to relieve him from his tribulation, but to forgive his sins. So he knows that he committed sin. He was confessing his sins. He was so willing to reveal his sin. He said, I will declare my iniquities. He is not concealing his sins. He would make no cover up of the fact that he regarded himself as a sinner. He admitted this to be true. Yes, I am a sinner. And he admitted that his sin was the cause of all his troubles. It was the fact that he was a sinner that so painfully affected his mind. And he was not willing to attempt to conceal it from anyone. This devastation brought upon David because of his sins had brought him also to true repentance. Verse 19, but my enemies are vigorous. They are strong and those who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Hate me wrongfully have multiplied. So, uh, have, having explained the reason why he thought proper to remain silent and deaf before his enemies, he contrasts that patience, his patience, with the malice of his enemies. He was like deaf and mute, but his enemies were so malice. David did not return evil for evil, as we mentioned in the story of Shammai, Shammai ibn Gira. But his enemies, on the contrary, returned evil for good. And they enjoyed their life, they exalted and were strengthened. David was weak and near to death. They were in full strength and health. And they could take advantage of his weakness. And he could not resist them because he was no match for them. In every aspect, they had the advantage of him. And David prayed, therefore, for divine intervention on his behalf. Without divine intervention, he cannot resist his enemies. So David tried to move God to deal more mercifully with him. He said, my enemies have increased in number. And David appealed to God for help because they were against him for no good reason. He said, those who hate me wrongfully, there is no reason for them to uh, be against me. And the underlying reason why they were against him, because he followed good because he was a righteous man. As we read in verse 20, those also who render evil for good, they are my adversaries because I follow what's good. So because he followed what's good, that's why they were his adversary. We may be very humble before God and acknowledge that we deserve all that God brings upon us, because all of us are sinners before God. And yet at some time, we may be aware that we have done no wrong to men. Yes, we sinned to God like David, but we did no wrong to men. And that their conduct toward us is wholly, wholly undeserved. Then the son closes with beautiful cry. In verse 21, he said, Don't forsake me, O Lord. O God, 
be not far from me. Don't forsake me, O Lord. O my God, be not far from me. So, this heartfelt cry, that's what David wanted from God. He wanted to feel the presence of God more than anything. David seems to have been under divine abandonment as if God forsook him and has an anxiety that God has completely forsaken him. Now he, he is pleading, please God, don't forsake me. My friends, my loved one had forsaken me. My own strength failed me and left me. Now I am asking you, don't forsake me. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God, be not far from me. And the last verse, make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Make haste. And actually God help his people when none also, when none else can help. So David pressed his need before God with urgency. Don't wait. I want you to come right now. And he looked at God as his only salvation. He said, O Lord, my salvation, you are my only salvation. So this prayer, the last verse reflected that it was a prayer of faith. He saw that his salvation was in the Lord and in no other friends, relatives, no one. And though he had been and was in such low condition in body, soul, and spirit, yet his faith was not lost. It's ob obvious that the psalmist was not in despair. He called God my salvation. Because if he was in despair, he would not use the last verse in this psalm, which is the high point of his whole prayer. So the effect of the trials that come upon us as came upon David, the purpose is to lead us to cry more earnestly to God. The sorrow, the sorrow and pain should lead us to God. Trouble never accomplishes its proper effect unless it leads us to God. And anything actually that eventually will lead us to God is considered again at the end. This actually concludes Psalm 38. As I told you, this psalm is one of seven psalms of repentance. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Jeho <laughs> O King of Peace, grant us your peace, establish us your peace, forgive us our sins, for yours is the power, glory, 
blessing and mercy forever. Amen. O Lord, make us worthy to pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, love of God the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, communion and gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen.